But I know that uh, another organisation um, is launching a petition around the issues of media and media freedoms or media impartiality, and that is New Zealand First and its leader, Winston Peters, who joins us by video link now. Winston, good to see you again. We've really got this thing operating like a, a well-oiled machine, it would seem to me. Uh, nice to have you with us. Well, good morning. I can say that... Uh, I was fascinated by your commercial or your advert right there because fundamentally uh, these are sort of developments which are so insidious in their purpose and at the end they don't very much vary from the Nazi world where people in thought control and attitude police were all in charge. Yeah. Now what is the petition you've launched that New Zealand First has launched, Winston? Well, we want a Royal Commission to media in this country because we've seen what's happened with Radio New Zealand and what was astonishing is that for how long it's been going on. But but anybody thinks that just a bias with respect to uh, the news coming from Reuters being twisted in the reformulation by RNZ where Ukraine is concerned and other countries, and I think that's a limitation. They've got to be joking. We've seen far too much lack of professional uh, journalism in this country of late. And it all has got some reasons to do with the COVID lockdown and what have you. But sadly, I think we've got, how shall I say it, an inquiry being launched by RNZ. But it's almost in part internal because Willie Akel is a friend of mine. He used to, we used to play rugby together. He's a defamation, he's a defamation defence lawyer against the media and he can hardly be described near Willie as neutral. Oh, I've got to say, card. though, that Willie, though, has got vast experience. I've dealt with him, too. I think he's an honest and good fellow. I I'd look at Linda Clark and, and scratch my head there. She's essentially a lawyer for the Labor Party. Uh, look, uh, you could say all those things, but uh, my next concern is that somebody's coming from that magnificently impartial media outlet in Australia called the ABC. This has got to be a joke. So we're saying, no, no, we're not going to settle for that. We're going to have a proper independent commission of inquiry yeah. into what's going on. We had Mark Jennings from uh, Newsroom on yesterday, the former editor of uh, TV3, who did try start off trying to tell me that, um, uh, that outfits like mine that criticise people taking government money with strings attached, we over-egged that argument, and he denied that he was doing what the government told in return for accepting their money, then admitted he'd signed a contract that, for example, says he will run his business in accordance with the so-called principles of the Treaty of Waitangi. Um, and I asked him if that wasn't a string attached to the Provincial um, Journalism Fund, and he kind of had to admit that it was. And his line then was, Winston, but we were already running our business in accordance with the principles of the treaty. And I said... So you do admit that you've signed up to agree to do that, and I said, I don't know why you're doing that. You should run a media business um, in accordance with the principles of the truth. And it seems to me we've blurred the line so much between state-funded journalism, advocacy journalism. We've kind of lost our way almost completely, haven't we? Well, what's tragic here is that a magnificent and key an essential component of democracy and the rule of law is an independent fourth estate. Now, whether we like it as politicians or whatever other profession we've got, you have to, and we need desperately and always have needed, an independent fourth estate. Mm. But that's not what we've got. Now, your Mark Gettings is a guy that I quite admire, quite like the guy, but the reality is if he can tell me what the principles of the Treaty of Waitangi are, and get alongside him the next lot of media bosses and explain the same principles, I'd love to know, because it's bulldust. You've got three clauses in the Treaty of Waitangi. The principles of the, the Treaty of Waitangi, wouldn't it have been something that was discovered by magnificent scholars like Peter, Peter Buck in the former Maori world, or Maori Pomeroy, the first Minister of Health, who was actually a Maori way back 100 years ago? Or, for example, the greatest uh, law, this lawyer who got a law degree in two years flat and his name was up on a Ngata. He'd have, if there'd have been principles, how would have told us about it. But no, no, here we come, these modern-day inventionists. Yeah. And now they ram it down people's throats. And with respect, respect to Mark Jennings, Mark, you've got to make a stand about this. You cannot be cowed by the fact that you're white and they're dark and they're Maori, and therefore they must be right. Uh, and I of... did ask him why he would run a business like that, given that if you're not the Crown and you're a New Zealand business, you have no obligations under the Treaty of Waitangi. 
Uh, only the signatories well, do, you know, and, and the news media certainly don't have any obligations under the Treaty of Waitangi. We've got an obligation to the truth. If your position... Well, here's, 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 can I just say this? Here's the point. You've got right now, and with the 100,000 extra immigrants coming here, described by the OECD in many cases as not having the skills that this country would need, and we all know that, we've got Maori who need housing, health, education, and uh, first world jobs. These fundamentals are not even part of the concern of the media in this, these, these, these days. They're all on about the esoteric, high-minded, high-fluting academic stuff that has dreamt up in some university sociology department. Yeah. It is no good for us. And the other day, here comes the rub, the other day they shut down between Ohopi and a port, the main highway for two hours. And you will not read about that in stuff, Winston. Not being oh, covered. The Apodiki uh, situation has not been covered in stuff. I heard a report yes. earlier not being covered perhaps on uh, television New Zealand uh, or radio New Zealand. So we do literally have a mainstream news media that are willfully blind to major stories by any news judgment, major stories which do not fit a, a woke narrative. We most definitely have that. And I'd argue, Winston, almost that... Someone rewriting Reuters copy about Russia, I'm way less concerned about than the fact that an inherent or cultural bias in a news organisation would affect coverage of politics or local affairs in New Zealand and mislead New Zealanders as to what's going on in their country. Well, it's all the evidence that people like me need to say there's something sinister going on here because, you know, this expression in the media called spike. This story was spiked. It has all the qualities, it has all the urgency for the public to want to hear it. You've got the roads shut down between Ohobi and uh, Poriki for two hours, just like that. And the public can't use it. The, the, pub, the, the public would have been lined up all the distance for I don't know how many kilometres, and also you had them driving on the wrong side of the road with their, with their heads out of the window and what have you, all in front of the police. And the, the story never made it out to the public. Yeah, well, we are the... told, Winston, if we want to talk about a Apodiki, we're also told that essentially the police are escorting gang members around Apodiki to make sure they don't clash. Um, surely, uh, a, a, and they're not intervening to get the schools open again or get the buses running again or open the parks and the library. It's, it's stunning stuff and, frankly, uh, it, it's gone beyond any joke, it is now a serious concern. Mm. And they didn't even have the numbers of the police there to do the job if they wanted a confrontation. Yeah. And what, what, we, what we need at the moment and have to have is an approach to the gang that is the one we should have had a long, long time ago. They should be outlawed. Well, OK. So you, you're saying we just get rid of them. A number of uh, members of my audience yesterday made a couple of suggestions on this. They said that if you are identified as a member of a gang, there should be an add-on to your sentence. You should be liable for longer sentencing for any crime. Would you agree with that? No, I think that's sort of artificial punishment. The punishment should fit the crime as an old dictum of the law. Okay. And when you come up with special ideas, but I do think that these people are terrorists and that they're feeding them muck and filth to the young Māori. It's an awful pathway down which we're going at the moment. And they're riding around in these flash park cars and flash bikes because they're involved in crime. It's all out there. And it's sinister and extreme. Yeah. And we've got to take a, we've got to take a stance here. All right. Um, Winston, given all that that we've just discussed, is a petition for a Royal Commission really going to change anything, even if this petition were successful? Surely what we need is a wholesale reform. We all know what's wrong. We don't need a bunch of shiny-ass bureaucrats running around um, getting paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to say, look, there's a problem here. Uh, you're quite right, of course. And the thing what one would have hoped for, that the romance and glamour that there is in being a first-class journalist or reporter, the purity of doing the job right, telling the truth regardless of fear and favour, all the kind of things we read about in excitement, as students about why journalism is a great career, the journalists should be doing it themselves. Sure. I'm trying. I'm trying, Winston, I tell you. <laughs> Very trying. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
All right, look, thank you very much. Good luck with the petition. But i got to say, I also said to Jonathan Ayling from the Free Speech Union, who we interviewed yesterday ahead of the beginning of that, uh, that ad campaign, maybe, you know, New Zealand First needs to talk to a group like his and you need to pool your re resources strategically because I think there is a growing mood in this country and a growing sense of dis-ease with our media and the way it is functioning. And I think that is across all sorts of sectors and all sorts of people. And uh, we do need to, to do something about it. So I thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. You got something to say? Thank you. Yeah. Well, can I just say that 30 years ago, I made a speech to the press council on the, along these very lines. What I said was, is emerging in this country, a lack of time, space and resources for serious investigative journalism. It's going to die if we carry on this way. And sadly, for in far too many cases, it has. Mm. Uh, Winston, I thank you very much indeed for your time. Have a good day. That is Winston Peters, leaders, uh, leader of New Zealand First. And interesting, didn't he? He got into a potiki, and I was just looking through stuff, uh, the Post this morning, one of the stuff newspaper, I think it's the biggest newspaper, nothing about a potiki. Now, I'm not sure if RNZ have covered a potiki other than it being a traffic closure. Did TV, you watch TV and Z last night? My problem is I do not watch the telly news. It's all such rap these days. No, I've been watching a one news coverage of the Opotiki. Uh, uh, so know. they have been covering it. They've well, been covering it and apparently the mayor's been involved in the celebration of the life of the deceased gang leader. So while we've been trying to get in touch with them. Oh, no, no, no. I saw, saw that. That's there. one of the reasons. And, and he won't. We've been trying to get he hold of the mayor, won't we? What's his name again? Um, his name is David Moore, I believe. David Moore. And David Moore went along to pay his respects. Why would you have any respects, Ben? Well, for a scumbag. It, it, it's like having respect for, I don't know, the Godfather. You don't yeah, do it, it out of me fear. If you're the mayor of that uh, city, you've got you've got far bigger issues to handle, and and you shouldn't really be seen to be on one side or the other, one yeah. side of the, this debate. Especially considering the schools are closed, the roads are closed, people are being scored around, people are scared, and he's there at the funeral. Going do you reckon I should guy. pop down to a potiki on Sunday? You could do. You could see if we could <laughs> vox pop some oh, people. Jeez, okay. Let, let's let's just see how we how we go with that.